Now, many, many times, people ask me, what's the greatest story that you know? What's the, your favorite story? It's very, very hard to know, because there are many, many great stories. But positively, the one that I'm about to tell you is from the top three. Literally, it's going to change your life, as you'll see in a moment. I heard the story from a chosh of a Talmud Chacham in Detroit. His name is Rabbi Eli Yellen. I was once in Detroit for a Vesiaco convention, and we were walking in the street towards the convention, and he told me this story. In Brooklyn today, there's a yeshiva called Derech Chaim. It was started by a Rav Pluchak and a Rabbi Renert. Nebuch today, both of them have passed away already, and now their children are the Rosh Hashivas. Rabbi Moshe Pluchak, who was the son of the original Rabbi Pluchak who started the yeshiva, told me this story. Every single year, the Kailo of Der Chaim would go to a place called Greenfield Park, and they had there what's called the Kailo Machanchem. Now, the Kailo would go there up in the summer and they would learn there was a tremendous Kol Torah in that base Medrash. Now, when I was a counselor in camp many years ago, every counselor had to be a Rebbe. It wasn't that you were a counselor, either you taught Gemara, Chumash, Mishnayas, whatever you wanted, but there was no such thing as a counselor not being a Rebbe. Over the last number of years, that changed. So all the camps have special Rebbeim that come to teach the boys. So these Rebbeim, they learn in the afternoon. Where did they learn? They learned in the Kailo Machanchem. So Rabbi Pluchak would get to know all these Rebbeim, and of course he knew the Kailo guys. He told me one year, he was a very well-dressed businessman that came in the first day. He never saw him before. And he sees how the guy sits down learning with a Gomorrah, and he's learning with Hasmada, and he's not embarrassed. If he has a question, he goes over the guys that are much younger than him, and he's asking him the questions. And Rabbi Pluchak was watching him for two or three, couldn't get over him. He goes over to him one morning, he says, excuse me, Rabbi Yid, you know, I've been here many years, I never saw you before. Who are you? I see that you learn with such a smudge, you learn with such diligence, and you're not embarrassed to go over to younger guys and ask them the questions. And he says, Rabbi, you don't know who I am, but the Oscar Gemara is carrying me. He said, what does that mean? He tells Rabbi Pluchak that he has liver cancer. And he says, if I would think about how sick I really am, I would not be able to exist. So thank God today there's such a thing as the Oswald Gomorrah. I never had an opportunity to learn in a yeshiva as a child. So I learn as best as I can. And I see there are many Tamil Chachamim here, so I ask them the questions. Rabbi Pluchak said, I don't want you to go to anybody. Come to me. I want to be your friend. Any question that you have in the Gomorrah, don't embarrass yourself. Come to me. And if I can't answer the question, I'll find somebody to get you the answer. But let's be friends, me and you. And they become very, very close friends throughout the summer. Next to the last day of the session, the next day everybody was gonna go back home. Rabbi Pluchak told me he comes into the base of Medrash and he's looking for this guy, he's always sitting up at the second table and he's not there. And he got nervous, like why is the guy not here? He's always there. And he sees him in the back. He's sitting in the back, his face is down, he's pale, he's frail and he looks awful. And he goes over to me, he says, is everything okay? He says, Rabbi, I've been thinking about it. What's the difference if I learn anyway? Who cares? You think I understand everything in the art school tomorrow? And you think I understand everything that you tell me? These guys that learn here, they're big Tamil Chachonim. When they learn, it's something. They can give it over, they can teach it. Well, who cares if I learn or not? What difference does it make? And Rabbi Pluchak told me that it was an absolute miracle that the night before, he had heard the following story that I'm about to tell you on a Jewish radio station. Many, many years ago, in 1957, there was a great symphony orchestra leader. His name was Arturo Toscanini. The guy was an Italian guy. He was genius in music, in symphony orchestration. He led symphonies all over the world. He was a perfectionist, and he had a raging temper. But people tolerated him because he was a genius. Nobody knew music better than him. And there was a biographer that was writing his life story. 
Now, he died at 89 years old in 1957, so this story happened a year before. And the biographer said to Toscanini, I want to come to your house tomorrow night. I got to finish the manuscript because the publisher is waiting to publish your life story. He says, tomorrow night you can't come to my house. He said, why not? He said, because tomorrow night I'm doing something so special, I don't want any interruptions whatsoever. He says, Your Honor, what are you doing that's so special? He said, you know, I used to travel all over the world, but I can't anymore because of my age and my frailties. But tomorrow night there's a concert going on in Europe, and I used to lead that orchestra. And tomorrow night there's somebody else that's doing it, but it's going to be on shortwave radio, 8 o'clock tomorrow night. I want to hear it, and I don't want any interruptions because I want to see how that conductor, I want to hear how he's leading that orchestra. He said, Your Honor, it will be such a pleasure and a privilege for me. I promise I'll come early. I'll sit on the other side of the room. I won't say a word. Please, please let me listen together with you. He says, You won't say a word. I promise I won't say a word. He says, OK, you could come. The next night, a quarter to eight, the biographer comes. He sits himself in the corner on the other side of the room. Eight o'clock, Toscanini puts on the shortwave radio, and they listen. The concert goes for 45 minutes. And then it's over. And he shuts it off. And the biographer says to Toscanini, wasn't that magnificent? And he says, no, it wasn't. I said, what do you mean it was beautiful? He says, it wasn't. There were supposed to be 120 musicians there. 15 were violinists, and only 14 showed up. And this guy's thinking, he's crazy. How could he know on a shortwave radio that one violinist was missing? He's out of his mind. But it wasn't going to tell him that he's out of his mind because he throw him out and he wouldn't let him finish the book. But the next morning, this biographer called the musical director in Europe. He said, I'm an American correspondent. You've got to tell me how many people were supposed to be in that orchestra last night and how many showed up. He said, it's interesting. You should ask. There were supposed to be 120 people there. 15 were violinists, but only 14 showed up. He could not believe it. How in the world could Toscanini have known that? He goes back the next night. He says, Your Honor, I owe you an apology. How in the world did you know that one violinist was missing? He says, let me explain something to you. There's a great difference between me and you. You're part of the audience. The audience thinks everything is great. But I'm the musical conductor. And the musical conductor has to know every single note of music that's able to come forth. When I began concentrating on the violinist, and I realized that it wasn't as strong as it usually is, I knew without a doubt that there was one violinist missing. Then Rabbi Pluchak says to this man, maybe to me, it doesn't make a difference that you're learning. But to the conductor of the World Symphony, who knows every line of Torah that can be learned, who knows every word of Tefillah that can be davened, to him, it makes a difference. The man was so taken by that, he got up, he started crying. He said, Rabbi Pluchak, how could I possibly thank you? You made me feel that it's all worth it. And the next day, they parted ways. And Rabbi Pluchak told me that that winter, he was walking in the streets in Brooklyn, and he saw the son of this man. And he asked him, how's your dad? And he said, my dad passed away. He said, but Rabbi, I want you to know, every time since he came home from your camp, every time he opened his Gemara, he said, I'm performing for the conductor of the World Symphony. Every one of us here tonight is a member of Hashem's Symphony Orchestra. We are all musicians. Some can play the drums. Some can play the harpsichord. Some can play a clarinet. Some can play the tuba. No two people are the same. I don't have to be like you, you don't have to be like me, and both of us don't have to be like him. Every one of us is a musician in the symphony of Hashem's orchestra. Hashem knows what we can accomplish. Hashem knows what we can daven and how we can daven when we put our minds to it. Hashem knows what we can learn and how we can learn. And that's where PTI comes in. Rabbi Shlomo Singer, the Abishish should protect him with good health and long years. He brought out the best in all the musicians that are here in Pusea. He showed us, every single one of us, that you can play the best music that you can play, 
And that's what Hashem wants to see from all of us.